Ever found yourself wondering if you're using who or whom correctly? Or perhaps you've puzzled over I versus me in a sentence. You're not alone. Welcome to the fascinating world of English grammar, where even the most fluent speakers can sometimes trip over common grammar mistakes. It's a journey that takes us through the intricate maze of subject-verb agreements, pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs. But don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Stick around to find out how to avoid these common mistakes and improve your English grammar. One of the most common grammar mistakes involves subject-verb agreement. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, in English, the verb in a sentence must match the subject in terms of number. That means if the subject is singular, the verb must also be singular. Conversely, if the subject is plural, the verb must be plural. Let's take a look at a couple of examples to clarify this concept. Consider the sentence, she runs in the park every morning. In this sentence, she is a singular subject and runs is a singular verb. Now let's change the subject to they. The sentence becomes, they run in the park every morning. Notice how we've changed runs to run? That's because they is a plural subject, so we need a plural verb. This concept might sound straightforward, but it can get tricky, especially with collective nouns. For instance, the team is playing well versus the team are arguing among themselves. In the first sentence, we consider the team as one unit, so we use a singular verb is. In the second sentence, we're considering the individuals within the team, so we use the plural verb are. So the rule of thumb is, pay attention to the subject. If it's singular, use a singular verb. If it's plural, use a plural verb. Remember, a singular subject needs a singular verb, and a plural subject needs a plural verb. Another area where many people, including English learners, often slip up is the use of pronouns. Pronouns are words we use in place of a full noun. There are many different kinds of pronouns, but let's focus on two of the most common types, subjective and objective pronouns. Subjective pronouns are used when the pronoun is the subject of the sentence. These include I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. For example, when you say she runs fast, she is the subject who is doing the action of running. On the other hand, objective pronouns are used when the pronoun is the object of the sentence. These include me, you, him, her, it, us, and them. For instance, in the sentence, the teacher praised him, him is the object receiving the action of the praise. It's important to remember that the choice between using a subjective or an objective pronoun depends on its function in the sentence not on the pronoun's location in the sentence. So, for example, in the sentence, it was I who broke the vase, the word I is correct, even though it comes after the verb was, because it is the subject of the verb broke. Pronouns might seem tricky, but they're a crucial part of clear and concise communication. With practice, using the correct pronoun will become second nature. Adjectives and adverbs are often used interchangeably, but they shouldn't be. You see, these two types of words have different roles in our language, and understanding these roles will make your writing and speaking clearer and more precise. So, let's dive in. Let's start with adjectives. Adjectives are words that describe or modify nouns or pronouns. They give us more information about the who or the what in a sentence. For instance, when we say, he is a fast runner, the word fast is an adjective. It's giving us more information about the noun, runner, it tells us about the speed of the runner. Now let's talk about adverbs. Adverbs are a little more versatile. They modify verbs, adjectives, and even other adverbs. They often tell us how, when, where, or to what extent something is done. To illustrate, consider the sentence, he runs fast. Here, fast is an adverb. It's telling us how the action, the verb runs, is being performed. A trick to remember is that many adverbs end in li, but not all. Words like fast, well, and hard are also adverbs. So, in a nutshell, adjectives spice up our nouns and pronouns, giving us a clearer picture of what or who they are. On the other hand, adverbs provide more context to our verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs, telling us how, where, when, or to what extent an action is performed. So remember, adjectives modify nouns and pronouns, while adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Now that we've covered some of the most common English grammar mistakes, let's do a quick recap. We began our journey by shedding light on the most common grammar mistakes that many English learners make. These mistakes, while seemingly insignificant, can dramatically alter the meaning of our sentences and disrupt effective communication. 
We then delved into the fascinating world of subject-verb agreement. Remember, a singular subject takes a singular verb, while a plural subject takes a plural verb. Simple as it may sound, it's a rule that can easily be overlooked. So always ensure that your subject and verb are in perfect harmony. Next, we ventured into the realm of pronouns. These handy little words can replace nouns in a sentence, making our speech and writing less repetitive and more fluid. However, it's crucial to use them correctly. Always ensure that your pronouns agree in number and gender with the nouns they replace. Our journey continued with the exploration of adjectives and adverbs. These descriptive words add flavor and detail to our sentences. Adjectives, as we've learned, modify nouns and pronouns, while adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. However, they must be used judiciously and correctly. Remember, adjectives answer the questions what kind, which one, or how many, while adverbs answer how, when, where, why, and to what extent. English grammar, like any language, requires practice and patience. The more you immerse yourself in the language, the more comfortable you will become with its rules and quirks. Keep practicing these rules, and you'll be well on your way to improving your English grammar. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more helpful English lessons.